I, I had a very classical education. I learned about the Greek and the Roman culture, also the Greek and Roman language. Aesthetics was very important, languages. And science was more a sort of sidetrack. Um, but I was always interested in biology, and I was regretting it at the end we didn't have any biology anymore. Um, you can go into botany through aesthetics, because um, the natural world, as we see it, has uh, an aesthetic appeal. It becomes scientific when you start asking why you have this diversity, why you have this beauty, and what regulates it, and that's a step further. But um, I don't see a problem to move from one side to the other, um, because what you observe in, in, in botany, you can very easily translate it, in, it into art, and vice versa. I can't say I'm working on a specific group. Um, there are some groups that are more interested than others, but I'm really scanning over the whole plant kingdom. And uh, one thing that is extremely important to know is that we, uh, we have a much better phylogeny, so the, the, the tree of life. I wouldn't say it's completely resolved, but we know the relationships of the groups of plants. And that's extremely important because we can now look back at the morphology and understand the processes that happen. Before we had a phylogeny, it was also was just guessing in, in the dark because we didn't have a system that was stable enough to rely on. Mm -hmm. So any assumptions that we may make on evolution have much more sense now than they used to have 20 years ago. And that's exciting. The only problem is that it's not a trendy research area. And um, few people do it. As a morphologist, I'm, I'm getting more and more involved in evil evil research. Not that I do it myself, but I collaborate with people who do evil evil, because we need each other. Uh, the geneticists work on a different level. Uh, as a morphologist, I can uh, tell the uh, geneticist, this is an interesting question to look at, because morphology, that could be this and that. Mm -hmm. And it has already given some interesting results. There are, in fact, you have a majority of two kinds of flowers. You have the monocotyle, which has parts in three, and you have the eudicotype, which has parts in five. And that seems to be quite a strong division between two kinds of types of flowers. Um, so the number of parts is quite important in flowers, uh, whether you have two worlds of stamens, a single world of stamens, and also the position of the different parts that uh, can help you to um, understand the relationships of groups, even families, even species, uh, and also give a better picture of the evolution, how things came about. There are some uh, fundamental steps in the evolution. As I say, this division monocots and uh, five-parted flowers is quite fundamental. And um, so it it's 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 true that it ha has arisen in uh, it has arisen in s at a certain level of evolution, and then it went its own way in a different direction. Um, but these structural steps are extremely important. Uh, they're, I think they're more important than, for example, whether um, you have petals or no petals, whether you have um, different placentation types, uh, whether you have many stamens or few stamens. These are sort of superimposed in it in a way. Flowers have adaptive structures, so they uh, will um, evolve in a certain direction. And um, in some sometimes organs will uh, get progressively lost. They lose their function, or they, uh, for some reason, they are not needed anymore, and they will disappear. And the moment they disappear, uh, is quite an important moment because once uh, our sort of genetic potential for an organ is lost, it can't come back. That's very important. So if flowers revert and go to different ways, they have to work with a, another number of organs. If they lose the organs, they can't use them again. If they have maybe a, a potential to use them, they will be able to use them. So it's a kind of matter of um, going forwards and backwards and um, using what's available. Becoming too specialized is, is always risky because um, if things change, they 
lose the ability to adapt to the changes. Um, talking in a structural way, uh, as long as you have something uh, that can change, that can evolve, you can go in any possible way. So if you have an organ that is um, maybe sterile or not used, it can, it can become something else if there is a pressure for it. Basically what uh, flowers do, they, they, they work with a number of elements, blocks I would say, and they just um, do whatever, well, I would say they do whatever they want with it, but they, they just can go in all possible directions. They can uh, multiply, they can reduce, and they can um, sometimes even get things from outside, from outside the flowers, so things from the vegetative parts of the uh, plant, and integrate it in the flower. So the whole evolution, I think, of um, angiosperms is just that it's kind of um, up and downwards evolution. So where things vanish and things come back. Um, and the pressures for that is probably getting more efficient uh, pollination mechanisms using the potential that is around in the environment. Evolvability is, is what flowers have, basically. If something becomes too specialized, um, there might be problems, but uh, I would think that these problems are more theoretical than real. Um, it's our way or concept that can't um, grasp certain uh, things that happen in nature. Mm -hmm. And I think nature is extremely um, has an extreme potential to go out, out possible, in other possible ways. I organize a, a, a master course. It's called the Biodiversity and Taxonomy of Plants. And basically, it's, um, it's quite an intensive uh, course to teach um, students to be really a pra practicing uh, taxonomists, practic practicing botanists, but not necessarily taxonomists. Any uh, person interested in botany can get on that course and can do quite a lot of things with it because we give them a very broad teaching. We have very big advantages in this course is that we are located at the Botanic Garden, so we have fantastic collections, and we have a lot of expertise, just the uh, uh, researchers working in the Botanic Garden who teach on the course. And finally, this is an incentive for many students who have a tropical field, tri uh, field trip to Belize, where they really learn about plants in the tropics. <laughs>